In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. It is now the eve of all saints. What would have been called in Old English, Halloween, Halloween, the Eve of All Hallows. The feast, this feast was on the uh, day of the departed, on the 2nd of November, were pasted over the old um, pagan feast of the dead which we find uh, in present-day uh, Mexico under the name of La Santa Muerte, the Holy Death. And you will see a lot of macabre dances and demonstrations and various things. And there are these uh, remainders from the old pagan days. And uh, like in days of old, let us Christians give a new meaning to this day of the dead, the day of the saints. Um, and so I will give this little spiritual conference uh, to mark this beginning of a new lockdown in France a period when we have to stay at home, uh, except when we have uh, pressing reasons to go out to buy food or to see the doctor or uh, various other exceptions. But apart from them, we stay at home and we make the best of it without bitterness. This feast of all saints of the Church Triumphant is celebrated under a new imposition of lockdown already here in France and in a few days also in England. The cloud of uncertainty descends again as human incoherence attempts to address a crisis that potentially affects us all. Many of us already weakened by anxiety Serious concerns for our livelihood and families may be driven over the edge as our lives become as chaff before the wind of the invisible virus. What is a saint? I want this evening to go beyond the usual tired stereotypes of exemplary Christians who are now dead and have a feast day in the liturgical calendar. For some time, I have been concerned about the dualistic separation between man and God, between natural and supernatural. Salvation and redemption begin in this life. It's what the Orthodox call theosis, deification by the energies of God. Without our first having to die and be judged and sorted into one of the usual characteris char categories by St. Peter sitting at his computer terminal. We need to go beyond these stereotypes, beyond the jokes, but also beyond the stereotypes. We are called to grow up and find God in ourselves, in other people, the entire material world that shows consciousness, life and energy. One message I want to get across is the need to overcome the impotence of most institutional Christianity and to speak to the heart of those who are weary and tired of the effects of human incompetence and denial. Of course, I have the pandemic in mind but also the spiritual malaise that goes back a very long way 
and not merely to the 1960s when young people rebelled against conservatism. We live in an age when the tone becomes apocalyptic. Some tendencies talk of the imminent collapse of civilization. There is a lot of speculation of fear mongering, like what I call the junk religion peddlers. They have been rife throughout history. There have always been conspiracy theories around epidemics, like the plague, the cholera, the Spanish flu, and now the present coronavirus. We are threatened by climate change and pollution, man's rape of our planet, and the replacement of reason debate with ideology and ad hominem insults. Are we entering a post-rational age like the Germans in the 1930s, few of whom having had enough critical thinking to refuse to go along with the Hitler worshippers, like Thomas Mann or Einstein, who immigrated to America. I do think that we are in a transitional period and few of us will see the new promised land. I remember a friend of mine who was a priest who died in 1994 and he said several times, we are here to plant the seeds, others will reap after we are gone. We have to have that humility. Again, we enter a period of locked and forbidden churches. I'm only sitting here without a mask because there's no one else in the chapel. Should we protest and disobey? I have no parish ministry, so it makes no difference to me. But I wonder if people have thought about why they go to church. Many go for little more than socialising. I read this criticism made by Alan Watts of Christianity, something that he wrote in 1947 in his book Behold the Spirit, a study in the necessity of mystical religion. The present low ebb of church religion consists in the fact that rarely, even for church people, does it give the soul any knowledge of union with the reality that underlies the universe. To put it in another way, modern church religion is little concerned with giving any consciousness of union with God. It is not mystical religion, and for that reason it is not fully and essentially religion. And I take that reproach for myself too as a priest. I know that I fall far short of the mark. What has all this to do with all saints? The notion of sanctity needs to be brought back to our own experience of life. We need to become aware of the enemy within which is not only darkness and evil, but also indifference and somnolence. Our combat is not only against materialism, but against ideas of religion founded on false principles. Jesus is clear in the Gospel that acts and gestures of humanity and love for others is a vital condition for spiritual life, but also a consequence of the spiritual. Science itself has changed from the era of positivism to the primacy of consciousness over energy and matter. The goal posts are no longer the same. And I see secularism as obsolete and passé, not something of the future. However, most of our contemporaries are outwardly materialists and fast asleep in terms of living at a level, level different from this world. Transcendence is not denied, but is increasingly ignored. There is no need for explicit denial if the matter becomes irrelevant. Institu institutional churches 
are meeting their karma like the rest of us. We are punished for our need for social life. Social life is a fundamental need of us all, but even more so is our transcendence of the material, or rather the illusion of matter. Still, the solution is our present local and temporal experience. The more the Church launches out into aligning itself with secular politics or opposing them, the more the essential spiritual and mystical elements is lost. If this is so, what is the Church with all its institutions and buildings for? Why keep it all propped up? Equally, why attend Church? Or why do we miss it when it becomes unavailable? Romano Guardini asked back in the 1930s whether modern man is no longer capable of a liturgical act. If this is answered in the negative, then there is no point in trying to acculturate the liturgy, but rather to close and sell all churches. I would answer this question in the positive, but on condition that we bring back liturgical catechesis or Mr. Goji. We should learn and be progressively initiated into the mysteries through liturgical symbolism. If this is not possible in Christianity, then we need to look to the Philosophia Perennis for another channel of revelation. Some people like Alan Watts went to Buddhism. I see no need, if we work hard enough, to see the same vision in the teachings of Christ and the early Church. In sanit vane curae invadunt mentes nostras, sepe furore replet corda privata spe, quid protest umultanis cae conare pro mundanis si celus negligas, sunt pauste tibi cunta si Deus est prote. Frantic and futile anxieties invade our minds. They often fill our hearts with madness, depriving them of hope. What is the use of mortal man of striving after earthly things if you neglect heaven? All things turn out well for you if God is on your side. These are the words of a piece that Haydn set to music and is often sung by cathedral choirs. Anxiety has become a scourge. I am no exception. I think of the German words introducing an encyclical that Pius XI wrote in the Nazi era, Mit Brennen der Sorge with burning concern. This time, the enemy is not Hitler, but ourselves. The enemy is within. Frantic and futile anxieties invade our minds. They did at the end of the 18th century and continue to do so now. I am no exception as one of millions of human beings living in the face of death. We all have to die of something, and adversity through the accidents of life or our own decisions. They often fill our hearts with madness, depriving them of hope. Over the years, I have learned a few elements of modern psychology and mental illnesses. Some illnesses are caused by diseases to the brain or neurological malformations. This is highly specialised modern medicine, of which I know nothing except some books I have read on autism. Probably the most common mental illness is depression. It may be partly due to chemical imbalances in the brain that can be treated with drugs. For me, it is largely due to our attitude in life and our capacity to understand the mechanics of depression. I will not make light of some, such a condition, though I recognise that some need serious medical treatment. 
At the same time, many doctors and psychiatrists, the materialists, they do not have the spirit, soul, body concept of man, or simply the ideal idea of a biological machine. One major characteristic of depression and anxiety is that it makes us go round and round with repeating thoughts and obsessions. The more we get obsessed with negative thoughts, the more, the more they fill us with bitterness, resentment, and in the extreme, thoughts of self-harm and suicide. The person who wrote this text in the 18th century was extraordinarily advanced in his knowledge of psychology. Remember that these were the days of Bedlam and the most obscurantist and inhuman ways of treating people suffering from depression, schizophrenia, other forms of psychosis, autism, catatonia, and various ailments causing delusions. Here we have a sign of empathy for those who suffer. I personally spent six months as a working guest at the Abbey of Trior, uh, Benedictine Abbey towards the south of France in 1996-7 and the experience was truly a catharsis for me. The idea was that of my old superior as a condition for my being reconciled with the Roman Catholic Church as a cleric. One thing I learned was the capital importance of silence. Not just the absence of noise but a real ungrunt within our souls, an undetermined uh, depth from which divine energy can reach us. This is something I try to put into practice when entering this chapel, putting on vestments to say Mass. The frantic and futile anxieties must be left outside, symbolised by taking up our shoes so that we can enter the sacred space. Indeed, the insistence on silence in the monastic tradition is the first requisite. What a contrast with the average parish church with all the chatter and noise, both in and out of the liturgy. But silence is not the absence of noise, but mastery over our inner thoughts that distract us from prayer. Silence is harmony and uh, experienced in music. M mental illness is essentially an inability to clear this interminable chatter in our minds. How many times have we heard people repeat their obsessive thoughts over and over again. What is the use, O mortal man, of striving after earthly things if you neglect heaven? Heaven is within us. Heaven is here, not up there, but right here, in another dimension. It is the ultimate romantia of all our desires and hopes. The present pandemic puts us face to face with death if we are elderly and suffer from illnesses that most people over a certain age suffer from. COVID-19 can take advantage of these ailments and bring our life to an early conclusion. We no longer have those borrowed months or years. Sometimes, rarely, the disease gets young people in their twenties and thirties. It can happen. Forgetting about the inevitability of death will not abolish it. We are mortal, and we have hope in what we Christians call heaven. Heaven is that domain of consciousness that is not subject to the illusion of matter. It is spirit. It is beyond our super-ego and limited experience. Some have speculated, others have had altered consciousness experiences, 
and have received knowledge. Most of us hope for something we cannot understand, the mystery. Earthly things are an illusion created by energy and nothingness, whether they are things money can buy or our hopes of excelling ourselves. All things turn out well for you if God is on your side. God is always there beyond us and within us to bring peace and beatitude. If God is on our side, that notion implies that we face an enemy. The devil and evil spirits are real. So are our unredeemed spirits until we side with God, beauty and truth. Our life is a spiritual combat as we fight these obsessive and diseased thoughts that drive us to the hell of insanity. Insanity is truly an image of hell. Many will never escape. Lasciate ogni speranza voi cintrate, sed dante allegiari. Abandon all hope, or ye that enter here. And that is what can happen when we go entirely into ourselves and become locked without any relationship with the other. Some can escape through hope in God and firmness to conquer their addictions and obsessions. All Saints is not only about holy people of the past, but our own way towards waking from our somnolence, clearing away the flotsam and jetsam of noise and chattering thoughts, that if we can find the absolute calm and silence of the Spirit, let us live our lockdown as a retreat and a time for peace and silence. Certainly we have to attend to our needs or those of our families. We will have no social life, precious little family life. Maybe our secular Christmas is blown and we will see little more than the bleakness of winter. Certainly the real meaning of Christmas will come to us in the stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, silent night, holy night. Sanctity comes through the darkness of the night, through the interior silence. These are some ideas that we rarely hear in mainstream Christianity. And for this reason, I have delved into the German mystical tradition of men like Jakob Burma and a whole tradition, a whole inspiration that inspired men like Johann Sebastian Bach in his uh, many church cantatas with their beautiful and profound texts. So this is, this is something that we have to work on as we go through this, this period of suffering, of loneliness, of emptiness. Let's fill the, our needs with the warmth and the grace of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.